Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is February 6th, uh, Digital Learning Day, and um, we um, welcome you to a show that Karen said about a month ago, you know, you need to just uh, put yourself at the top of the show, and so I um, humbly accept. Um, and uh, so we're going to talk about badges a little bit here, uh, digital badges, and Karen's going to do that for us. We had invited uh, the badge lady from um, PDPU, Vanessa Grinaldi, is that the, did I say? Generelli. Generelli, thank you. And, but she is ill tonight and can't be here, so we'll have to represent uh, what we know about badges on PDPU. Um, Karen is uh, at the... Does a lot of work there at PDPU and can represent as well. But we do have Emily Gilagoski. How how did I do with that? Pretty close. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, from Mozilla Foundation. And um, how, what is your title? You. I'm my title is a uh, design and community lead with Open Badges at Mozilla Foundation. So you know everything we need to know about Open Badges and the backpacks. I would say um, the future holds quite a bit, and our community also knows a lot. Um, I'll contribute more again. <laughs> Super. Well, thank you for coming on. And um, and uh, you and I both did a, uh, a five minute presentation. So we thought, Karen thought, I gotta say, that uh, we would start there. But I want to finish introductions here a little bit. Paul O is with us from the National Writing Project, and Christina Cantrell is with us. Christina has been messing around with badges too, and um, and then we have a student um, with me, Anthony, whose badges we're going to talk about tonight. So we can actually get it from Anthony. Um, I'll sh I'm going to breeze through and I'll, I'll tell you why once we start it. Um, and then we'll um, slow down and have a more um, generative, open conversation. Does that sound good? Anybody else want to say anything before we get started? Thanks for hosting this. I'm really looking forward to it. Great. Yeah, thanks for inviting us, Paul. Super. Okay, so um, I let's see. What I need to do is click on this, and we can get started. So, Karen, um, try to keep me to the 15 seconds kind of thing, okay? Does that make sense? Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so, so I'm just going to talk and uh, go quickly. So here's what I want to say. Um, one of the reasons I'm excited about doing this quickly like this is that I never get to tell the whole story, um, and, and, it's, and, and you kind of don't get to see the system. So just pre presenting it really fast here shows the system. So what I want to show is how Anthony here, um, great picture there, Anthony. Anthony here earned these 15, <laughs> earned these 15 badges that you can see here, um, and he earned them and uh, er, earned an English credit by doing that. So um, the badges are kind of um, very, uh, they're all about getting credit uh, for an English class. Um, I'll, I'll introduce Anthony and say he's uh, going to be 19 next, next month and will be graduating a couple uh, months after that. So here are the 15 badges. They are divided into five different challenges. Um, each of these challenges represent a kind of, um, not a kind of, a very specific and connected to the Common Core Standards um, area. Thank you. There you Can we go back one? I, I guess it's you. I'll speed up. Just, just give me a thing when you uh, hold your hand yeah. up when you want to go. There you go. Thank you. That <laughs> that anyway, so the the fifteen badge. What happens is that students, the students. Oh, you don't need to do that, Anthony. Oh, okay. You can just see it on the screen. Yeah, don't worry about. It. So students can okay. see. Oh, uh, sorry. So students earn these badges uh, uh, by finding assignments in PDPU. Then they do the work mainly in Google Docs, and, and it ends up uh, the work ends up on Youth Voices, and then the badges get put up on the Open Badge backpack. Um, so that's sort of the three things we'll look at here quickly. Go for it. Hi, Monica. <laughs> I get to interrupt myself at least a little bit. So here are the five things again. Um, citing evidence and conversation, independent reading, text-dependent research, formulating arguments in areas of interest, self-directed learning. And what I'd like to say is that those are the five things that over the years um, 
working with Youth Voices, but also just as an English teacher, that um, have felt like the most important things that I want kids to repeat. And by that I say, I mean they, they, they end up being habits of mind, habits that they develop, and I want to see it happen on different levels. Um, and so they're important enough to kind of make into challenges is, is one way to think about it. And so what's on the screen there is a grid, and then you'll see within each challenge there are four tasks, which we can talk about in a second. So what I'm going to show you in the rest of this are the four tasks. So here's what, what happens. One of, the, one of the challenges comes up in PDPU. This, that's the old PDPU. There's a new PDPU. Anyway, the, the challenges come up, and there are four tasks for the students to work on. Um, and there's just a blow-up of one of the tasks, so we can kind of get bigger. Some of those tasks also direct students back to um, missions and so forth on Youth Voices, so, but they get the assignments online and then work through the assignments and then get the badges get, um, they apply for the badges through Anthony applied for the badges um, on P2PU. So that's the basic setup. They get the assignments and the badges. Here's, um, here's what Anthony did. All right, so First thing he did, thank you, you're, the slides are going too fast now, which is okay, I'll, I'll catch up. So, <laughs> okay. so um, the first badge that uh, Anthony earned, I don't know if this is the first one you earned, Anthony, but the first one he earned, yeah, now go, go forward, you're good. What happened? Sorry. Okay. So, citing evidence and conversations, he, um, Anthony wrote four five-paragraph comments and other students' uh, discussions. I am being very specific and not describing a lot of what actually did. We can talk about that in a little bit. So he wrote to a classmate in the same room. He wrote to two students from Windsor, Colorado. He wrote to a student from Europe um, uh, on here as well. Those were his, his four responses. Go for it. Go ahead, Kerr. Thanks. Um, next, uh, one of the th one of the things we look for is independent reading, and this time Anthony read a book called My Bloody Life: Making of a Latin King, um, and he wrote four different times, twice, he, and he pulled them together and posted twice about the Latin Kings. Once he looked at character development. Um, next, he looked at uh, some of his own experiences in relation to what happened in the book. The third badge that uh, Anthony earned was for <laughs> doing uh, text-dependent research, we call it. Um, and uh, Anthony did a project on graffiti. Is it art or crime? Took lots of notes on different things he was finding online. Um, one of the things he posted that was really interesting was uh, 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 an assignment we call Reclaiming the Topic. Um, and he got lots of comments on that. He actually got a lot of comments as he was at d doing this project as well. Um, go for it. Karen, did you do it? No. Karen, next slide. <laughs> it just takes a minute because of oh, the does. screen share. Okay. So, I can, okay. So, you to work on some jokes. so, and trying to are, anticipate you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, I'll tr okay. So, um, to earn the badge for formulating arguments in areas of interest, um, and this was a self-chosen topic. Um, Anthony, uh, he actually, yeah, this is where he got over sixty comments on his first response to one of the articles that he wrote. Um, the, uh, he did loops, which is a Peter Elbow um, little thing. He made a photo essay, not little thing, Peter Elbow exercise that's useful in generating text. And then he created what we're, we call also a Peter Elbow um, inspired uh, assignment called a collage essay, um, which includes multimedia and quotes from many sources and photographs. Um, in addition, while all this was happening, Anthony was doing self-directed learning. Um, Thanks to some of the, the um, examples that Monica um, has, has given us. Um, he worked on a bio. He had 10 self pen world questions. He created an icon. I think he might have had some of that done already, actually, because I had Anthony the year before. But he also um, did a, a detox journal, and he had a choice in that journal to do either a video, audio, or, or writing. So his detox journal includes all of those. So level two. 
and we're gray now units. So we go to level two. He's back. He he once again. He he. Um, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So on level two, let me quickly explain. And three uh, people, three peers, peer to peer. You remember is where we're working. I was one of those peers, and and Karen might have been one, and maybe a student. Um, looked at uh, the comments that Anthony continued to do. Two comments he wrote in Spanish to a couple students in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, even though Anthony isn't very fluent in Spanish, but he was messing around there. Um, and, uh, and a student who was uh, doing a research project on dropping out he really connected to, that student as well. Uh, once again, you're, you're, you should be noticing there's a repetition here. <laughs> the, so independent reading. This time he, he read a short story called The Night We Became People Again. Um, and he, he, uh, again, he wrote about personal connections to, to Blackout. He developed themes of community and connection. And we actually went to see a play as well. Um, the next thing was a it's, – it's going good, Karen. Thank you. Um, next he did uh, – this time his text-dependent research. Um, notice he did loops again. This time uh, he did our gangs, always a bad thing was his question. I, I, I don't know if I'll – well, let me just say quickly that when he was doing the graffiti, I thought, you know, maybe you're doing street art. Maybe we could look at Banksy. We, maybe we could look at, you know, Keith Haring. And, and so that's where I was thinking he was going to go. But sort of out of the independent reading, I think, which was about the Latin Kings and just his, his – Anthony's question about graffiti was really about what's the difference between gang graffiti and art graffiti. So I think Anthony went into looking at gangs. He looked at the Latin Kings. Uh, looked at Wikipedia article there, uh, with, and some first-person accounts and so forth. He he then um, posted all of that again, more or less feel, um, following a very similar kind of outline uh, where he did annotations, um, did dialectical notes, lots of read, not lots of reading, I, three or four articles you read, watched some videos, um, and he ended up writing. A collage essay there again. This time it was Latin Kings, the good and the bad. And while that was going on, he was doing this. And these don't don't go in any particular order. I got to say, but he was doing um, self-directed learning as well. This time he did write uh, these stories called Indelible Moments. Um, he did three video journals this time: uh, Connect and Dream, Notice and Do were his videos. And finally, the capstone level, which is red. <laughs> um, we do two – he did uh, two complex detailed posts. Notice that um, – and we can talk about this in a little bit, but um, there are actually fewer and fewer assignments at each level. Um, but they end up the – there ends up being what I would say kind of more quality to each of them. Um, maybe more quantity as well. But he was still commenting on other people. Um, from, and Bob and Brendan were both dealing with gang uh, questions as well at this point. Um, his reading this time was to read Jimmy Santiago Baca's memoir, A Place to Stand. Um, he made connections. He asked lots of questions. He tracked elements in the text. Compared that with his own experience again. Plus, and he sort of just threw this in, he wrote an, an essay this time um, comparing the play and the story, uh, the blackout story with the, with the blackout of his own as well. Um, and this time, um, and Anthony, you and I can talk about, we started talking about, like I just sort of said, you know about the Young Lords, and, and we put together a, a guru um, uh, where we collected some articles and videos. Um, Anthony helped me build that together, um, all about the Young Lords. Um, and he produced a couple of different posts about the Young Lords. Finally, um, the sort of final piece on that was uh, something about the Young oh, uh about Puerto Rican rights and so forth. Um, and while he was working on all this, he um, – where are we? Oh, you did go back. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so – if, if you, 
if it's not clear, each time he's adding a little, each level he's adding a little bit to his profile. This time we asked him to write a couple of poems um, and add those to his profile. And he did a couple of detox video journals as well. It looks like video took over. So after he finished that, all of that and he applied for all those badges, that's good. We can move on. Um, he earned his credit. So that's the whole story. Um, there's a lot of detail and hopefully a lot that we can go into, but um, I want to just kind of show the, the whole story. So thank you for being patient and watching that. I hope we got something out of it. Yay! <laughs> that was not five minutes. <laughs> and Paul. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Anthony. Thank you. So, yeah, Anthony, yeah, go for it. I'd like to hear from you, Anthony, about just how you felt about going through this and sort of how this experience was different from sort of other more traditional school experiences you've had and what you liked and what you didn't like. Well, what I liked from this experience was the whole thing about the grid because if you was to choose a topic or an idea that you wanted to do and to investigate and, you know, do a, what you're interested on, those guys that were given on during the grid kind of broke down specifically what you wanted to be interested in, the whole idea that you had. So that, that kind of helped me out and gave me more of a of a better way to understand the question that I was asking myself that I wanted to find out the answer. So it was a fun experience. How did you feel about the way that the different levels kind of looped back through the same stuff? Did it seem repetitive or did you feel like you were getting deeper into your content? At first, it, I mean, it was repetitive, but at the same time, it was it was getting more specific in each level of what to do. So for the first, you know, first grade, you you had five you had five challenges and five um boxes on each um row that you had to do. At the second grade, you know, it kind of broke it down into like I think was it three in each one, and basically it was repetitive, but it was on focusing on other other um ideas as well and kind of getting deeper into what you was doing and what topic that you was doing so I guess yeah it was repetitive and both at the same time it was repetitive and you was getting deeper so it was kind of the same because nothing really changed during I mean I'm not saying nothing really changed during the grids but um it did buy a little bit but it did what it was repetitive so I was kind of used to the idea and the procedure of what to you know when it came to do a new idea when it came to a new grid because every grid that I that I had those three grades to get my English credit was um, a different topic but getting deeper into what I wanted to find out next so for instance like at first for my first grade my topic was to do graffiti whether to see if it was a crime or was it art and as I was going to this I was reading a book called the bloody my bloody life the making of a Latin king and I was there was a part in the book where I read that they actually used to tag you know do graffiti around and represent their territory or what's there you know what was their um, um how you call it, their neighborhood? So that's when the idea came to me when I compared gang graffiti into art graffiti, like murals and what you see on the street, like scribble scrabble by gangs or whatever. And um, that's when the idea came to me to do um, in the second grid where the guides, you know, it broke. The, there was this thing called reclaim your topic to find out what answer. I mean, to find out what question you wanted specifically to find out for your next grid, and it was the Land Kings. That's that's what it came to be, and I that's what I used for my second grid to um to to do. It was the Land Kings, and as I was going into my last um grid, I wanted to do something related to more about gangs in Chicago, because the whole theme about it was in Chicago, because the book was based on Chicago in the nineteen early in the nineteen sixties. Um, that's when my teacher, Mr. Allison, came to me and he asked me. You know, there's this other, this other. Um, it was a gang, but it came to be like a. Uh, there was more of um activists and protesters, and it was called the Young Lords. And I actually was interested in the idea, and wanted to find out more. So me and him got, you know, together and found articles that, you know, related to these Young Lords. And I was interested in the idea of how they was a gang, and they was actually closely related to the Latin Kings, and they turned into something. I could say in a positive direction, and I was just interested into the idea of the fact that these guys were actually fight for Puerto Rican rights, for better housing, better um, health care, and what so not. 
and the stories that they, you know, the 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 protests that they did was just unbelievable. I mean, when I was reading through these texts, it's just like I was getting interested and interested. So each grid made me get more focused into what I wanted to do. That's basically the whole gesture, the over um, overview of it. That's a nice description of how those loops work, and I think. You know, sometimes we think of something as repetitive as being a negative, but it really is an opportunity to sort of delve deeper in it. And I would say from the stuff that I've seen um, of everybody's work in P2PU on these challenges, there definitely is sort of a refinement and a getting deeper on the topics, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> People have other comments or questions on the Youth Voices work? I have a question. Um, so one of the reasons why I decided to join the Hangout was is because I'm doing some work in, in Oakland uh, with a group of Oakland teachers um, around a, it's a civic engagement project. And one of the things that we're uh, thinking about is, you know, the way in which we can utilize, you know, both like the badges as they're set up at Youth Voices and, you know, perhaps using Youth Voices as a platform. Um, but also just, you know, like how we can use badges as a way, for instance, to, uh, you know, to identify uh, and certify the kinds of skills and competencies needed to be, you know, an engaged civic actor. Um, but so I guess my question, you know, so in having conversations with teachers in Oakland, you know, this is like a really new thing in a lot of ways for them. And so I thought I, it would be great to join this Hangout to be able to hear from you know, like Anthony, for instance, I'd be curious, like, what you would say to a group of teachers who are, who are thinking about going down this path. Like, so some of the questions that they have, for instance, are, like, if it's, you know, if it's, like, your peers giving badges to peers, does that lower the standards, you know? Um, so, I mean, that would be a, a question that I have um, for you. I mean, I, I personally have my own thoughts about that, but, you know, this is a question that teachers have, I think, in thinking this through. Another question they have is, um, is is the challenges format, is that like kind of gimmicky? You know what I mean? Like, is it is it just like too much like a game and that, you know, it doesn't really represent like enough um, rigor in a way? So questions like that I think would be great, you know, to hear what anyone has to say about that, but, you know, especially you, Anthony, or you, Paul. <laughs> Go ahead, Anthony. Do you have any thoughts? Well, honestly, it's not a game because besides <laughs> it's not a game. It's not. It really isn't because of the fact that, not for nothing, Mr. Addison, but it's so much work cool. that you have to do that it's just complicated. <laughs> it's not a game. It's not. Sometimes I get tired of it. I mean, it's not that I'm tired of it, but he really wants us to be focused into the, you know, literature and, and, and really want us to be better writers and better yeah, better writers that, you know, he wants us to really know what we want and what we want to discover, you know, anything in the world and interest is. So it's not, I mean, I really don't consider it a game because it is a lot of work. I mean, at first when I had to write a five paragraph or just a comment, I was, I was, a, I was, this, I didn't really was, you know, I didn't really like that, but I found out the reason why it made me a better writer to take something that you read and make it and elaborate it more to find out, you know, what you really want to discover. So as for the part for the game, I didn't really, nah, I don't really <laughs> consider the game, to be honest. How do you feel about the badges, Anthony? Like, are they motivating to you? Do you think about them? I think they make me a better writer. I mean, ever since I took those grades, I took other topics like economics that wasn't for Mr. Allison, and they actually told me, you know, you, you're a really good writer, and I honestly could say that because of this. I used some of the guys that I was given for my economics um, credit to find out what I really wanted to discover inside and what to be specific about my question to give it as a project for my other teacher, Miss Levin, and that's what um, his guys actually helped me out a lot, so. Yeah, I, it's not for nothing, but I think it's interesting that the badges are kind of in the background here. Um, you know, so, but, and so we can think about that. Maybe we, um, Emily could present, um, and then we can continue this uh, more open conversation, because I want to make sure that she, that her presentation gets in. So. Absolutely. Um, I think, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, 
Anthony, thank you so much for sharing that. I think okay. um, one thing it really points out is that badges kind of exist in the background. Sort of the idea that um, there is real self-driven learning that, that you really inspired and the badges are simply a form of recognition on top of that. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, and I'm not sure if it's possible to share the slides. Yep, they're up. Okay. We're, we're showing them. Can you see them on the screen? Uh, I can see them in Karen's view. If you click right. on Karen. Click on Karen and then you'll see Perfect. them. Okay, great. And she'll um, move she'll move them along when you give a thumbs up or something. Sounds good. Um, so I'm Emily. I work at Mozilla. Um, many people think of Mozilla as being Firefox, but we actually have um, a big web maker initiative, which is all about inspiring learners of all ages to make and hack the web. <laughs> Um, and part of the idea behind open badges, which is what we work on here, um, is really a sense that um, many of um, the things that we do that, that tell stories about us feel very siloed. And we're really interested in how it is that we might create a more cohesive picture of what it is um, as learners that we're capable of, really to tell powerful stories to um, our educators, our peers, and potential employers. So two years ago at Mozilla Festival, which is a, an annual gathering of um, folks interested in hacking and remixing the web, um, we really started to notice um, a lot of people getting interested in badge communities, um, and yet there was this problem where um, my badges from one online community weren't really transferable with my badges from another. And so we started to wonder, what would it look like if the badges that um, a learner is earning across the web um, really be used to help them sort of map their own learning pathways? Um, and so it, it absolutely you know, needs to be said that badges aren't just um, skills. Badges can represent a lot of things. They can represent um, achievements, competencies, interests, passion projects. Um, we've really seen a, a wide range of, um, of different sorts of skills and attributes being represented with open badges. And the difference between open badges and what you almost almost always see on the web, um, digital badges, is that open badges are really information rich. So they have metadata baked in um, that, that really um, makes it possible for someone who views your badge, let's say on a social network, um, to be able to click through and learn more about the criteria that went into your earning of that. Um, and these, you know, this isn't just um, educational or, I guess, formal educational institutions that are that are using this. Um, nonprofit organizations, multinational companies, um, groups working in professional development are all really starting to take to this as a as a form of digital skill sharing. And of course, they can complement um, much of the self-directed learning and sort of peer sharing that is already taking place. This, in many ways, becomes sort of the, the icing on a really rich, delicious cake. <laughs> um, and it's important to know also that um, this isn't just hard skills we're talking about. Um, there are a fair number of badges that um, can represent collaboration, empathy, leadership, team building, all sorts of things that we think of as, as sort of soft skills, but that employers are increasingly interested in um, when they're making decisions about who to bring onto their teams. Um, and this is something that, that really can happen alongside the learning process. It's not disruptive to it, um, as Anthony, I think, highlighted really well. Um, this is something that, that is part and parcel to um, the, the exploration of curriculum. And so what we've developed to support this ecosystem is really the, the technical infrastructure that makes it possible for the badges that you earn in one place to be shareable and portable with badges you earn in another place. So oftentimes these feel like um, they're stuck in these walled gardens and instead we've said what if we can make them 
really shareable so that earners can, can present a really robust picture of their interests and what they're capable of. These are a few examples of badges um, that are out in the ecosystem. On the top you can see WebMaker badges. These are Mozilla issued badges um, all about sort of teaching some pretty basic web skills. Um, on the bottom you can see Passport, which is a, a program by Purdue University that offers a set of badges both exclusive to students as well as offered um, to uh, earners around the world. So just to give you sort of a sense of, of the range that these badges can take. Um, and you might think of this, this ecosystem as sort of having three core pillars. The first is badge issuers. Um, so in this, in this case that would be Mr. Allison, um, who's actually the issuer of the badge. Badge owner. Oh, go ahead. Or, or PDPU actually is, but yeah, I think, isn't it, or is that? Yep. No, I'm sorry, you, I'm corrected, you're right. So PDPU is the issuer in this situation, so they've actually worked with our technical infrastructure. Um, they have uh, listed the metadata specifications that um, someone who looks at Anthony's badges can go to see more. Anthony, in this situation, is the badge owner. He's the one who um, completed the curriculum and has earned the badge. And displayers are sort of the third component, and that's um, if Anthony was interested in sharing these badges on the web, um, let's say via a Twitter or Facebook status update, um, on a WordPress blog, et cetera. We, but just can I just say quickly, we embed yeah. them, we, we embed his page on the profile on Youth Voices. So that's one way they get displayed. Yeah, it's really so. neat to see. I mean, it, the display component isn't just limited to the big social networks. It can be anywhere, you know, any site that you host that you're interested in displaying badges from. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a quick look at the metadata spec. This is um, sort of looking at the front end of the badges. Um, and this is where there's some technical resources involved. Um, Mozilla can also provide a little bit of limited help um, for organizations that are listening, looking to issue badges and not quite sure how to get started technically. Um, and just sort of in wrapping up, um, this is sort of a, a more visual way to think about what I've talked about. I know it's pretty um, complex and so it, maybe some visuals can, can help just make it feel more real. Um, so at the top we have the badge issuer, in this case PDPU. They've issued badges. Um, the badge earner has completed that, that content. Uh, they can then push that badge to their badge backpack, which is the, the badge management tool or utility uh, that we use. And from there, push it onto some of the display sites I mentioned. And ultimately be able to see increased uh, learning and career opportunities, which is the thing that gets us really excited. Um, and so in sort of wrapping up, this is our, our homepage, openbadges.org. Um, if you haven't already, you can go take a brief quiz, earn your first badge. It's very instant gratification. Um, but it sort of gives you a sense of, of just how simple this can be on the earner end. Um, and I know I ran through that pretty quickly, so if there are questions, let's go ahead and turn it over for, for discussion. I did have a question, uh, Emily. When you talked about the um, issuer and the um, endorser, mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to make the parallel to the Youth Voices. So in, in this case, Paul, would you say that the issuer is p to pu but the endorser is really your youth voices community. Yes. Or the peers. There is. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, yep. And and um, sorry. <laughs> I just was I just was interested oh, I, in that idea that there were issuers and endorsers and they're kind of working together, but they actually might really be different people. Um, hmm. involved and that that's a real that's a very interesting sort of pairing potentially or an important pairing right um, Paul do you want to speak to this and then I can follow up no I, I what I was gonna say is that um, even even that formulation that the youth voices community is the endorser um, 
I really, I mean, my experiment this year has tried to be to give power to the badges, if I could say it that way, to make them count, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that so that the actual endorser is my principal, <laughs> and right. the and right. and <laughs> right and the state who says, yeah, these fifteen yeah. badges give a credit, mm -hmm. right? So, that's really huge, I think. I mean, yeah, I think that's huge. really <laughs> groundbreaking. And there, I mean, a lot of badges are being used. Karen, in, we can't see you yet, by the formal. way. Sorry. But yeah, your point, um, I want your point. Yeah, it's good. A, a lot of badges are being used, I think, in less formal situations. And to actually say that your badges equal credit, and I mean, I've certainly got a strong sense from your all of your students that, you know, they are very, very motivated to get these credits and graduate. <laughs> And badges is what lets that happen. That's big. But yeah, but but then can, the problem <laughs> that, that that I see is that I don't know if the teachers in Oakland um, or the teachers even um, on the Youth Voices Network or Monica, um, can, you know, um, want to use a badge like um, independent reading or. You know, so I don't know how to to make them count. I for me, they had to be very specific, but then how to how to make them count and not be specific, so that they can be shared across different places, different schools is is an interesting problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's something that P two P U is. I don't know. It's an evolving thing, so I don't I don't want to say about sort of future directions, but I know there's been talk about. And there exist on P2PU common badges that are meant to sort of um, display competency in a specific skill that could be used across courses or groups. But then there are also very specific badges, um, like the ones that you and even Christina have developed, that maybe they maybe they could be used across groups, but that wasn't really the intent. I mean, they're really for a very specific purpose. And I'm curious if anybody has comments about sort of what the pros and cons of that. I think to do common badges, to me, I mean, you really have to have a common understanding of sort of what it means and how you demonstrate competency, which seems in a very sort of dispersed ecosystem, that seems potentially challenging. Well, so I... So I, I don't want to speak for all Oakland teachers, even though I am wearing my East Bay t-shirt. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, no, I cannot speak for all Oakland teachers. But I will say that I think one thing in just this initial exploration, you know, with this, uh, with essentially the team of people who are leading this initiative, one of the things that is very much appealing, and I think you know this, Paul, from having spoken with Leah Jensen, uh, who's, you know, on the team, mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, you're the 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 skills and competencies um, that are linked to the Youth Voices badges are, are also powered by Common Core. And so whether you like or dislike Common Core, I think that that's, you know, that's a whole other conversation. But I think in that case, there is, there is an appeal you know, and a belief in the potential for universality with, uh, with the, the setup that you've created. So I'll say that. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, Paul. And I think that the, um, like, there's all these badge systems being developed that were funded by MacArthur. And I know one of them is also in a school district here in Philadelphia. And um, it's related to digital storytelling. So I also was having the same kind of questions. Like, how could people plug into that? And Common Core actually might be one of the ways that that helps people plug into it. At the same time, it's very specifically being developed for the specific purpose. So I, I think the conversation is really interesting, but um, you also don't want to um, keep making badges. You know, it's like you'd want to sort of check, you know, would this work, you know? And um, I don't know. I think it's a really interesting question. Yeah, and I, I don't. I'll just say this one last thing, which is, you know, the, the other piece that we are thinking about here is this idea of, well, what does it mean to be a civically engaged actor? And, and so as part of the initiative, we're working with out-of-school groups. So I think one thing that is also potentially exciting about badges that I think speaks to this question in some ways is the fact that 
you know, I think we can think about, and I think this is the, like, the intellectual piece to creating a badge system that I think is really challenging that I think you tackled, Paul, which is, you know, what is, what is the framework, actually, that, you know, that we believe, uh, you know, needs to be badged? Um, like, what are the skills and competencies? And, you know, where can youth get those skills and competencies? So it's like, in the diagram that Emily was showing, you know, we have a lot of out-of-school partners, you know, so, so it seems like we can develop this framework in some ways from scratch, you know, in a, in a way that is outside the bounds of like what is typically assessed in school. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, I mean, yes, on the one hand, it's great to be linked to Common Core like your badge system is, but on the other hand, the badges allow us to actually think beyond, you know, what is typically assessed in school. Um, the, the framework gives us that freedom in a way. Mm -hmm. I know um, that Emily's going to need to leave in a couple minutes, and I just wondered if she might want to speak about um, the issue of assessment and sort of how it relates to badges, because I know as soon as you say Common Core and then people start thinking assessment, and I know there's a lot of sort of discussion around that that's not really what badges are about. Do you want to speak to that, right, Emily? Absolutely. So I would say um, we actually had a discussion about this at Philadelphia University that um, that went on for about an hour. So it's a, it's a very sort of nuanced um, difference. What I think is that um, badges are not assessment. Badges can be a form of um, a form of recognition or of the fact that an assessment has taken place. Um, but I'm, I'm really wary of saying that all ba open badges can be is about assessing someone's performance. I think they can be so much more than that. Um, particularly around really being able to indicate, um, you know, that someone is on a learning pathway. So potentially not even that that they've achieved mastery yet, but they're on their way, and that they they really this is sort of a, a mode of discovery and um, being rewarded or recognized along that that pathway, which you know it doesn't always look like a, a linear, um, a linear, much more like a constellation. I think that's um, individual learners sort of connecting these interests and these hobbies and these passion projects. Um, and so I, um, my sense is that um, badges can be very tied with the idea of sort of new forms of accreditation and assessment, but that's not all they are. I hope that's helpful. I think that is helpful. I, I heard someone describe badges as also as a as a different way to show a transcript of learning. So particularly in informal situations, like we think about this a lot on P2PU because typically there isn't formal credit tied to it, but that it's a way to show people what you would show on a transcript. So whether it's employers or, you know, formal education institutions or whatever, a way to sort of document that. Right, exactly. I think um, you, when you say documentation, it's almost capturing and then being able to look back on what it is that, that you've created for yourself. That, um, you know, because this ecosystem is really still in its infancy, I think there are so many questions around what does it look like to create sort of this, um, this digital catalog of, of what you've built and to be able to lean into that and really let it inform your future learning processes. And I think that's, you know, that makes for a really exciting time within digital education. Hey, Anthony, I was wondering if you could, um, I had a joke to say to you, um, to, but then, and Emily, if you have to leave at any point, we understand. Thank you. Um, but, um, which is, the, in, in Emily's presentation, she said that you could put your badges on Facebook. Um, would you want to do that? Nah. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. On, on my opinion, I wouldn't do it. Would you ever show them to an employer, um, prospective employer, like if you were interviewing for a job? Would that make sense? Oh well, yeah, well yeah. Then yeah, if you put it in that case, yeah, I would. Okay. There's a question in our chat on the other um, on the other page about for Anthony. It, are badges motivating to you? Our badges motivated. Our badges motivated to me. Yeah. Yeah, they are. 
<laughs> yeah, they are motivated to me because, um, like I said before, you know, they make me a better writer to what I was before. I mean, when I first met Addison, he came to my school. I was a terrible writer. I mean, he will always tell me that you got this wrong, you're not writing right, you know, you're not this and that, you're not giving too many details. He, it was just a complete mess, and I would be frustrated on myself because I would think that what I wrote was was good enough, and I'm always defending myself. So I finally just eased myself, and he showed me, you know, a few guides of how to become, you know, a better writer and to fix my grammar, my punctuation, everything, and, and English skills, which I was, I guess at that time, was very poorly in writing and everything, but... I actually became a better writer, you know, today, I can honestly say for myself and for everybody and all the teachers in my school. So, yeah, they do motivate me. It's nice to hear you tie the badges to actually your writing skill and, and that, you you know, you see your writing improving and that it's not just about getting the credit. I mean, I know getting ah. the credit and graduating is like a big thing that's, too. That's, an, but that's important. That's very important. But it's good to learn stuff on the way while you're doing it. So this, that is a good <laughs> oh, That's thing. nice. Awesome. That is very nice. <laughs> But, you know, every time we ask you about badges, you end up talking about something else. Did you notice that? Yeah, because there's so many things to talk about. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a fun experience. So, I mean, I, got not, I mean, there's a few. That's nah, cool. It's good. It's cool. I mean, I, I, it just, it really does feel, I mean, I'm, I'm so, you know, I, I like that this, we have a, a proof of idea. Um, but I don't know if the idea is good yet, you know. So it's just like out there to kind of, as a piece of data, and 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 want to keep thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I and and one one of the things that I heard Paul one of the ways you said um, that that we can use badges to assess things that are not typically assessed, and and I want to say I I kind of imagine that we could use badges to make clear that the kinds of things that the Common Core Standards are asking for can be achieved in unique and subversive ways. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so that, you know, so that, that the, those things that are not typically assessed also matter and, and also add up to those Common Core things. Is that I think that's yeah. huge. I think it is huge too. Yeah. I think another thing that's interesting about the badges that I guess I hadn't thought so much about before, but they're really a, a very concrete way of measuring progress in terms of it being a totally self-paced sort of process. So for, mm -hmm. for, if people are, for people who are less familiar with the way Paul's classroom works, the students totally pace themselves and they can sort of move through they can pick which classes they work on they can do a bunch at the same time or they can do one and they can sort of move through it as fast as possible and the badges are to me they're a really nice way of concretely particularly tied into that grid I think that grid is really important but you can say you know I've got six of the 15 and you know sort of exactly where you are is that does that seem accurate to you Anthony yeah, it is. What you said was everything on point. Well, if I have to add, I actually think when he put the um, independent reading, um, um, what is it, the independent reading role where you have to write about the book twice, it's kind of, uh, at first, I think that was it was one of the best um, things that he actually put in the grid because of the fact that it actually, if you read something, it's not right away you're going to understand it. So what he wants you to do is actually write about what you know about the book and go back and find out, you know, to have a better understanding gesture of what the book is about. So I thought that was really, you know, you know, really um, good that what he put in. I think the grid is a nice way of making the goals in the curriculum very transparent to everybody. Seems like something everyone would want to do, but it's not always the case when you walk into a classroom. Well, I, Karen, I'm wondering if, um, I, I just sort of, like the grid to me seems like a, it's, you know, a really highly developed set of well thought out um, sort of approaches to supporting a learner and a writer move through a set of, of ideas. And I mean, I could even imagine myself using that grid. Like that grid is really, you know, you can 
sort of imagine yourself sort of walking through, okay, what, how's my inquiry? How do I deepen it? How do I read that thing and then read it again? You know, because yes, as Anthony says, you don't, you really do have to read it twice often. And, and then, you know, reframe my question and go back into it. And so what seems to me powerful about it is sort of even beyond just this like situation of Paul's classroom, but what is, what could it, what could it support in a variety of situations? So I guess that's part of what you're trying to figure out, Paul, cross disciplines and all that. Um, but I'm also wondering as like a piece of something, as a, you know, across grade levels. I mean, it just seems like it's, it's flexible in various ways. Um, so. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. Micah, you, do you want to jump in at all? <laughs> or you're just hanging out? <laughs> Thank you for coming. What? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I just said I'm good. Just taking it okay. in. Okay. Fair enough. I have one more question I'd like to ask Paul and Anthony both, which is particularly about in level two where multiple people, um, mm. in level two of the grid, three people need to do a peer assessment um, and before... And it's based on a rubric as well, of, of sorts, but yeah. Are all of them based on a rubric or just level two? Just level two. Oh, okay. I've only done level two, but usually, because I go in and do peer assessment sometimes. So my question is, I often don't see a lot of students peer assessing each other. Like I see, usually Paul has always done one and I often jump in and some of the other people... And I'm I'm curious, what's the dynamic there? Like, do students not want to assess each other? Or are they just busy and focused on their own work? I know Anthony, you've done a couple, which I think is awesome. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? Honestly, with the peer assessment, I mean, I guess everybody in you know my school is it's just rushing to get their credits done. So I mean, when this told, if you're not if it if you're getting told to do something that has no credit toward you, you're not getting no credit <laughs> at all. I'm just being honest. You're, right. Most of the students won't do it. But, um, I mean, do I think, I mean, I did a few, but, yeah, that's basically, like, what the students are in my school will be. Like, if they're told to do something that has no way they're getting credit over, they're not getting no credit, nothing, and their grade changes to improve, they're not going to do it. So, yeah, that's basically... The dynamic thing that you're saying. So yeah, that's that makes sense. Yeah, I, and I would say the whole assessment piece is uh, is and self-assessment is uh, isn't there yet. You know, there could be a lot more when 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 you apply for a badge, there could be a lot more um, self-reflection, that kind of thing, is, um, than we're than we're doing currently. Um, but but you know what, and and it, but it reminds me if I could throw out, um, and I, I just this week have been messing around with Thimble, right, um, Mozilla, and um, something that I had uh, used a WYSIWYG editor to create, and then I wanted to look at the HTML. I threw it in Thimble, and I immediately got four badges, um, you know, which which was you know that was cool. But, you know, and I put them in my backpack. Did you put them on your Facebook page? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but here's, but here's, here's the serious, uh, the, the thinking I was doing about that. Like, and, and Monica and, and I have talked, and we all have um, different people, uh, about, you know, what if badges were just sort of automatic when you do something? And I actually think there's something... Like, if you looked at my backpack and you saw those four things, you would see that I could do those things, and I more or less can, but you don't really know what I can do, right, um, with those skills. Yes. And so, so it, needs, it needs also a story with me saying, you know, this is, this is what I can do, and, you know, yeah, these little skills are part of what I can do. I think that's yeah. some of what Emily was talking about, about that embedded... Metadata, that's sort of the big vision of badges that you could sort of click it and dig deeper that anyone could and see what was really behind it. I think one of the challenges for me with badges is there's so many different things. I mean, there's a lot of really what I think are just kind of meaningless badges. And, I, you know, even on P2PU, there are or there have been in the past at least some of those kind of automatic badges 
that are really not they don't to me they don't really mean anything and I it's confusing to me when I see sort of two badges that physically look kind of the same and one of them is that and one of them is like this work that Anthony's done is like this hugely important really in-depth stuff and mm -hmm. I, I don't know I mean maybe that's okay and maybe it's just up to whoever looks at the badges to see what they're what they stand for but it's I well mean, it's if the if the state or somebody is going to say you know these are good enough for giving credit then and they look at two badges and they see totally different things that's going to be going to have to be a conversation at least <laughs> I don't know how that's going to go. Do we want the state yeah. Like, I, I mean, I have mixed feelings about it. I have mixed feelings about it because, I mean, I like the idea of, of credentialing or transcripting informal learning, but I think when the state starts giving badges, it's going to be like the awful assessment and the crap that, you know, it's going to just make it not good. Well, we so, can't control that kind of, right, Karen? Like the badge ecosystem kind of exists, right? Well, but people, I mean, the the, the state's only going to do badges if a lot of us go and say you should do badges. They're not going to just do it on their own. And I, I, I question whether we should do that, I guess. I don't know. That scenario, yes. But if, if I'm, I'm a, uh, a servant of the state, right? Yeah. So, so if, I can, if, I, if I issue badges, and, but, I, but they, have to, they have to, at some point, I can be audited and say, you know, are you issuing badges properly? Kind of but it's really credit, and right? I mean, does your principal really know what the badges are, or he's basically trusting you to give credit because he knows you? Yeah, but see, but you could push that to the state then. So when you say the state's giving badges, I mean, will they really know what they mean? Maybe not, but you know. So. Well, so so you know, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I can just say a couple of things. One is uh, I agree completely with uh, what you were just saying, Karen, about the importance of the metadata piece. I think that's the thing that really draws me to badges, you know, yeah. and, and distinguishes that from, you know, many other ways in which um, we're recognized for what we can do um, in school and out of school. And can I, sorry, could I quickly add the example here that if you, if you follow um, Anthony's badges, you will get, it's not easy, i got to be honest, but within th like three clicks, you will get to the actual work. So they end up being a, a digital portfolio of sorts. Yeah, of yeah, sorts. which I think, awesome. is, yeah. I think that's really exciting. But I will say that I think uh, this question of like, what does it mean to have the state involved in badging, I think is actually a really, really important one. I mean, I'm not sure how this is all going to play out, but uh, already, you know, there are teachers who are wondering like, you know, are badges going to be used against us in terms of, <laughs> Uh, you know, like somehow if we don't earn these particular badges, we'll be like decertified. I mean, you know, and, and that could it be used as a weapon against, uh, you know, them in terms of their certification. Uh, so I, I'll just put that out there. And, uh, you know, additionally, I mean, in Oakland, one of the things that uh, is being looked at in the school district is, you know, they're trying to, the, the administration is trying to um, incorporate some of the work that you know has been started around civic engagement, and they want to make it. I, I'm not even sure what the diagram represents, but it's like some diagram that shows, like, you know, what do what do we want to make possible for kids by the time they graduate? And you know, one of these areas would be like that they have, um, you know, the 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 ability to be a civic actor, and so so like as you know as as these ideas of you know informal learning I think starts becoming incorporated into like the routines of school systems uh, yeah I just think that these sorts of questions that you're raising Karen are you know really important to think about like well I also think these examples that are being developed in youth voices are really important examples too of sort of some healthy ways that this can be developed in that context Paul so right. mm -hmm. can, can, and, and Karen if I could Ask Anthony. Um, speaking of badges, uh, what's your goal in life? What do you want to do? My goal in life? Yeah. Oh, I want to um, like my career, like something that I want to get accomplished. Oh, I want to become a police officer for the um, NYPD. So you'll need a badge there, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you're ready for that, Paul. <laughs> that was too easy. 
<laughs> I do have a question for Anthony, though. Yeah, last question, yeah. I think, though. We're time up. Yeah. Oh, ahead. sorry. Okay. How did you get 60 comments on a post? I, that sounds really uh, quite remarkable, actually. Honestly, to get 60 comments on a U Voices essay is a very, very accomplished goal because you do yeah. not get a lot of comments. Really, check the website yourself. You won't find a lot of comments. So 60 yeah, comments is something very, very big. That's great. And honestly, I don't, I don't, I have so much positive feedback. People were actually talking about the issues on the comments. I, it was a great piece. I mean, it was, the, it was my best piece on U Voices. I was surprised. I guess a lot of people had the issue. Of what, I guess graffiti is a going thing around the United States. I didn't know people was actually giving. Their hometown, how their you know how their um, graffiti affects them, and all this stuff, and they were just judging on whether it was a crime or it was art. So, basically, um, it was it was good. It was positive feedback, and um, I had fun with that 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 essay. And there was a lot of comments. I couldn't reply back to all of them, unfortunately, but I did reply to some. But yeah, it was it was one of my great pieces. Well, congratulations. That's really great. Thank you. And Anthony's building a robot right now, right? Robotics class. Oh, yeah, I'm That's in a robotics awesome. class. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be writing about that, too, on uh, your voices. So, cool. you know, look forward to that. <laughs> Great. We will. Hi. Um, we should end, uh, Karen. Yes, thank you for facilitating this, and thank you all uh, for coming. Anthony, especially you, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for having it. me here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Um, and um, we want to thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, who... Um, Run edtechtalk.com and worldbridges.net. Um, and we're here every Wednesday night. And uh, this will go up at teachersteachers.org as well. Thank you all. Thank and, you. Uh, right, thank good you. night. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye -bye. Thanks, Anthony. I'll yeah, see you on you. Youth Voices.